Hey everybody, I'm Adam. I'm Michael. And I'm RJ. This week, we're going to revisit The Big Lebowski, because we're bored in Ohio. play the music in my head man who wrote your theme song by the way i did did you put and did i you, played it you yeah. made that whole thing uh-huh up? it's beautiful you really, you i really too. like the theme to your podcast oh, thank it's you good stuff that's adorable that's high props thank you very much it's true he can actually play play shit i just try to figure it out i don't know what notes i'm doing what just, you're doing is way harder than what i do is it real yeah you know it's way harder right now <laughs> listen to two of you <laughs> Well, uh, why don't uh, we introduce our guest for the week? I was looking at you. I have you... to stay here all week? Oh, yeah. Well, well this <laughs> week's episode. <laughs> RJ is, uh, does... You, you introduce yourself with your, your, what you do also. Yeah. Uh, you want to know what I do? <laughs> Your side projects that you do. Oh, my side projects. Yeah. Well, we don't have. To, he doesn't have to like plug his shit yet. Just oh, you want him to plug it who, at the end. Say who he is. Just who am I? Yeah. RJ. RJ. Who, <laughs> who is RJ? R- RJ is one of my bestest, most lovely friends I've known Aww. since 1993. Yes. Okay, we have to pause this and make out. So we'll be back in a minute. So you've, I, uh, you've, I known, live- you've known RJ since I was ten. Yes, and uh, I lived with RJ for. We eight. went to college together. We've been roommates together like eight years, three times, and yeah, we've been through all kinds of. You know, this is sound like a best man, more like a maid of honor speech at this point. We've been through some great times and through some really low times. I want to see and... tears if you're going to do this. <laughs> no, Mike and I are longtime friends, and. I met Adam through Mike, and I'm also friends with Adam, and we've done some movie stuff together. And That's right. You should point out that he's in the promo, Adam. Oh, the, the clown-facing gas mask? It's I, yeah. I am part of the clown-facing gan- gas mask alumni. <laughs> I don't know what that gets. I need to put that on my IMDb. Yeah, you should. You should. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because we're not on IMDb. <laughs> give, give it some legitimacy, would you please? <laughs> really, I mean... If you if you take into account what RJ plays in the promo, the house that we inhabit was his. Yeah. So really, he he's like. I'm in every episode. What you're yeah. trying to say? Mm-hmm. Everything around us. We don't ever show was what his did. decoration. That's super meta. We don't show what we did with him either. He could technically be anywhere. Oh yeah, we could definitely Sh- bring him back. Listen, don't point. do a spoiler, because I might come back. <laughs> We were fucking bringing the show again. Somebody, <clears throat> Mike, always delays or halts progress. Listen, I'm old. All right. I've been trying to get this douche to do shit with me for a long time, so it's we barely get to hang out, let alone do projects together. When you move 45 minutes away, it makes you a little do different. live in East Jesus. <laughs> you, I mean, you've been to my house, you know. He used to live on the west side of town. You know how awful that is. And no. you're not giving him any no. grief. I used to that. have to drive all the way out to his shit. Yeah, place it was too. terrible. Yeah. It was it? terrible. Yes. It was terrible. Now you've moved to civilization. Although I wouldn't know. I've never been invited to your house. So. That's actually fucking true. <laughs> he just called me out and made me a dick he on did. my own fucking he did. podcast. He did. <laughs> all right. So uh, for this week, we're revisiting The Big Lebowski. Uh, primarily, uh, RJ brought this up that uh, they were showing the Big Lebowski in theaters. Uh, Mike and I didn't go because douches. Well, partly it was a lo- logistical nightmare for me. Mm. But RJ went and I saw it in theater. Um, I'm curious, how full is the theater? Very unfull. <laughs> <laughs> Because I know they do, like, Lebowski events where well, it's, like, the, a big deal, but... Yeah, this is a little different. So I'd say there were probably a dozen, maybe 15-ish people in the theater. So if you're not aware, um, 
the major theater chains that they have this thing called Fathom Events. Okay. And mm-hmm. so they do all kinds of stuff where they'll show old movies. Like they're going to show like South Pacific and closer to in November, they're going to do like Die Hard and some. They, they, they also do some. Are you an anime yeah. guy? I'm not. They're, they're, they're showing some anime movies and they're West, showing. Weston them. would be all about that. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, Fathom Events has these events where they show old movies in theater and they're not very. I mean, unless you see it on their website or on like Facebook or something, they're not super well advertised. In fact, Mike had trouble finding it. I put the stuff today. and I wouldn't even show it. Yeah. But I assure you it happened because I was there. there. I can show you my tickets if you want. So, um,. This is the 20th anniversary of Big Lebowski, which is kind of a misnomer because it's it. Now we're in August, and the movie was actually released in like March of '98 or something like yeah. that. So anyway, so in celebration of the 20th uh, Turner Classics movies, it was showing the Big Lebowski in theaters again. Do you know what's an interesting fact, Adam? What's that? I had uh, no interest in seeing this movie when it came out. Mm. This, I don't, we didn't. We never saw it. You the bought theater, it. Did we? You ended up no. Yeah. No. RJ bought it, and then uh, we were living together. He he'd owned it for a while. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many. I don't know if it was a few weeks or a month. He kept asking me to watch. He's like, "You're gonna love it. Watch it." I'm like, "I've got no interest in watching this movie at all. Nothing." Then one day, he forced me to sit down. I think he offered to buy more beer. <laughs> and instantly. <laughs> Instantly loved it. It's kind of like a Rocky Horror Picture Show. I hated that to no end until he forced me to watch it over and over again. And then... I know the first time I saw it was in college, which was in the early 2000s. And I feel like that, for whatever reason, that was like a thing. when we Because well, you, you came back. Yeah. That's how we met in college. Right. You came back and, and did a different major than what you originally had went to school for. Uh, I feel like that was like a thing in the early 2000s where that was like a super big college movie. Yeah. Like it was, we we always had it on. Yeah. Yeah. Always had it on. All the frat guys were like, Oh, the dude and everything. So it was like a cultural phenomenon. I felt very specifically to college. It was weird because it definitely came out. It was like what you said, 98 and yeah. 98. Yeah. and, And we, well, like I started at DAP in 2002, uh-huh. so like four years later, and it just had this cult following. It was like a, a college thing. It was really weird. But that that was my first introductory to the uh, the movie. You didn't want to watch it in 98? I didn't know about it in 98. How old, no. were, you in, how old were you in 98? In 98, I was six, well, no, I was, fuck, I was 14. Shut your socks. Just shut up. <laughs> 14 or 15. There's yeah. an age gap, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Reminder Mike is a lot older than me, so his friend RJ is also a lot older than me. <laughs> RJ's two years older than me. Oh, shit. Yeah. You old fuck. <laughs> shut up. You look good, though. Thank you. I'd still fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> I did. <Who> wouldn't? <laughs> yeah, I, I turn uh, 45. This weekend. Shit, really? Mm-hmm. Well, happy early birthday. Yeah, I, I, I get the notification on my phone. Uh huh. Although by the time we release this episode, it'll be you after will my already birthday. be forty-five. <laughs> I'll already be forty-five. This is so happy birthday. birthday. This is already a time capsule in the future. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Happy belated. If you want to b- wish me a belated f- happy birthday, you can tweet me at Fat Jedi. Yeah, he's, already he's already plugging. He's already plugging. He's already plugging. That's what this whole just, all these people he's, are immediately he's, thinking, oh my God, how can I wish this guy a happy birthday? And that's how. Because I'm not going to give you my personal email address on here. Yeah, yeah. Born, there you go. Tweet me. Born self-promoter. <laughs> you know, uh, I was talking to Adam and reminiscing about the Halloween party we do every year and how you came as Walter that one year. I and did. I, I, it's probably one of my favorite costumes. And you I, looked and exactly I pulled it off. like him. Brilliant. Oh, yeah. You looked exactly I don't brag like on myself him. very often, but that was, I was pretty proud of that one. RJ's not very humble. Um. And, and the thing was, and Mike has commented about this before, <laughs> it was like a bullshit costume that I pulled together at the last... But it looked, I, I bought nothing for that costume. That was ev- just shit I had laying around. Even the sunglasses? Even the sunglasses. I don't even know how I He's ended hoarder, up with those sunglasses. The they were in a junk drawer at my house for years, and I'm like, oh, Walter... 
Grew a beard. That was really the only prep I did for that. It's amazing. It's amazing. You just wake up one day and realize, I have all the right items for this one character that I've seen before. Yeah. What does that say about me? (laughs) (laughs) Subconsciously, he's been preparing for it for years. That must be what it was. You'd be surprised when I'm prepared for it. I don't, I don't know if I would yeah. be. <laughs> Adam, yes. <laughs> maybe, maybe. So, what is, what, what does this movie rank? Uh, we'll start with you, RJ. For, for you, how do you, how do you classify this? We were talking, Adam and I were talking about this when we were watching it. How do you classify the film? Is it, is it a comedy to you? Is it's it a comedy. A, it's straight up comedy to you? Yes. It's like a dramatic comedy to me. I don't this look at is... it as like a Bridesmaids, for example. To answer your question, this is my favorite comedy, period. Number one. See, I wouldn't call it a, a, dr- a dramedy. Sure. Like how you're saying it's drama and comedy. I would actually more label this as a black comedy. Because it, like, I'll some go of with its that. tones are. I'll, no, I'll go with that. I don't feel, well, you know, when Donnie dies, it's kind of sad. Yeah, like I'm saying, like, some. Spoiler s- alert! Spoiler! 20 years later, <laughs> we do that. If you haven't noticed. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, some of the themes are a little darker. Some of the, like, what's going on is a little darker. So I would classify this as a, a black I'll comedy. I'll go with that. All right, fine. Is it your... But it's to you, it's it's a comedy. It's right? a comedy. Is it, I, it's, I, it's, it's I, would, I could see where someone would think it's a black comedy, but I, I just think of it as a comedy. It, there's not enough darkness in it for me to 100% commit to a dark comedy. RJ doesn't see race. He doesn't. <laughs> you got you got a you've got a pedophile in the film. You got uh, rug peers. You got nihilists. I don't see any dark in this at yeah, all. You know, uh, something occurred to me today when I was it? watching it. We don't really know that he's a pedophile, and not and and the, this is really Walter is never wrong. But what he said is he exposed himself to an eight year old. Now, how could that have happened? Like he could have just been running naked through the streets. But later he does say eight year olds, dude. Eight year olds. Well, that, puts that's still in. that's still in reference. I don't know, man. I Walter is never wrong. Never. <laughs> I well, I don't. I really don't think this is our sword to dive on. No, yeah, I, totally. I don't want to get into the whole bit of it. But anyway, I, I just wonder how because I don't. I don't know if you know this. You know that John Tuturo is writing a movie. I did know this about this character about the Jesus. Yeah. Did he get yes. their Did he get their approval finally? Because I know he was trying to ask for a while. Well, what I was from what I've read, yes, he has their approval. Like I mean, they had to give him permission to use the character. Yeah, but so well, we'll find out then. I mean, uh, th- that occurred, and that's the only reason that thought occurred to me. Because how do you make a pedophile lovable and give him his own movie? Like some, there had to be a backstory. The guy's a pedophile. Him. He exposed himself to an eight year old. All right. Pedophile. I wouldn't go flasher. If he's, if he's a flasher, then he would have done it to some old ladies or something. He went for an eight-year-old. Okay, that's all he says, though. It's a very nihilist. Non- he could have just been taking a leak in the park. There you go. Anyway, all right. So it's your favorite comedy. What's it you to you, Adam? It's a comedy to you, yeah. <clears throat> it, I, yeah, I mean, black comedy, whatever. Like it's still comedy. Comedy is the. One hundred percent. Oh, I agree. parent category. Yeah, uh, it rates in my top ten. I I haven't thought about it enough to decide where. We're not recording a podcast or anything. <laughs> Just take... Yeah, give him shit. I haven't decided where. I haven't thought about it where where it lies in my top ten. It's definitely top ten. I know it's not number one because number one is Ghostbusters for me. Yeah, that is just can you name anything else that's above it though for you that's above the big lebowski yeah since it's in the top 10 well i mean ghostbusters is number one but for me i can't think like of many comedies ever that i would rank above it for me so is this your favorite comedy too yeah it would be my favorite yeah black comedy just say comedy i'll say comedy to make you all happy i said it's definitely in my top 10 for sure I haven't given enough thought. Is it in your top ten of it's probably food my, it's, films overall? I don't know about that. I'm I'm more drawn to fucked up, uh, hostile and stuff. Yeah. No, 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 not that. Like, like hostile. <laughs> Nymphomaniac one and two. Like no. Antichrist. Like, 
fucked up oh. like uh, either like crazy movies or or somewhat depressing movies like uh, Clockwork Orange, Fight Club, oh, uh, Children of Men. Those are those are rank really high for me. I'm drawn to those like almost uh, dystopian. Uh, None of these are worst. comedies. He asked. Okay. No, no, well, no, no. He, I, no. He, he, I moved he on. Asked, oh, okay. he, he asked just movies in general. Okay. Because he, he he couldn't tell me if it was where it ranked in the top ten. It's just a top ten of comedy. I said, well, is it at least in your top ten overall films of all time? And, See, yeah. the problem with me is I have a hard time comparing a comedy to a drama to Sorry. a thriller because they're so. To me, they're so. But drastically different. different. Yeah. Um, it's hard to like. So like. It, compare Die Hard to uh, Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind. I I can't tell you. Like Die Hard is incredibly entertaining. It was it was a, a a pinnacle action movie of its time. And then you take Eternal Sunshine, which is a very thoughtful indie drama mm-hmm. that has a lot of sci-fi elements to it. That's executed extremely well. How do you compare the two? I mean, you could you could go solely based off of just how it made you feel. Like, well, I'm, I really enjoyed I based this. it off of what the ones I would want to watch. Like, if I had all of them sitting in front of me, which one would I grab first? Which one would I grab second? You know, which one would I not grab? But I would definitely watch if it was on cable because I was flipping through. You know what I mean? No, you don't know what I mean, do you? Because you haven't seen a lot of films. We've been through this. I've seen a lot of I, films. I do. I'm with you. Like, I'm very... I used to buy a lot of movies. I had a pretty, do you remember? I oh, had yeah. a pretty sizable, nothing like some of our other friends, but I had a pretty sizable collection on VHS. And then I had a part time job where I was working at Best Buy on the weekends. And so every week when new releases would come out, Best Buy would have them at a discount. And I would buy movies. And I yeah. bought and bought. And then I realized there are so many freaking movies on my shelf that are still in shrink or that I've never watched, that I stopped doing that. And so I got very selective about what I was buying. I'm only going to buy something that I know I'm going to repeatedly watch, not just because it's new and hot and cheap. Although that can be hot sometimes, too. Mm -hmm. Uh, So Mm -hmm. anyway, the big... So I'm trying to keep my digital movie... Because now we're all moving to digital, right? Oh, yeah. No one's buying Blu-rays. I do sometimes, but... um, But Big Lebowski is probably one of the first movies that I had in my digital collection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what you do? You buy the Blu-ray with the digital copy, then you sell it back to half books, Mm. half price books, and you get half your money back. Yeah. You're like, well, I only spent 10 bucks on this $20 movie. Yep. Right? Right, I just buy it digitally. The wife doesn't like to rich people problems, right? Don't don't even go there. <laughs> the wife doesn't want me to. I mean, I know most of the Blu-rays anymore anyway have the digital code for it also. Mm-hmm. But uh, and I you don't, have, you I have don't many wanna, that you didn't. Don't, you don't want to drive your brand new Jeep to fucking Best Buy to pick up some fucking poor person Blu-ray. You the, can just buy it from your iPhone 10. Unlock, look at, unlock it with your fucking face. You fucking rich fuck. <laughs> the picture quality is, I do see a difference watching it on the Blu-ray than I do if I'm watching it digitally. So depending, There's compression. Yeah, so depending yeah. on the film, I will buy it on Blu-ray rather than buy it digital if I really want the extra crispness. Go ahead, run with it. I said crispness. But now you're on Apple platform, right? So everything's 4K now if you've got 4K capability. Sure. I don't on this TV. I do. I didn't want it. <laughs> All right. The poor guy has a better TV I than know. you. Hey, I'm middle class. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> I work just hard enough. <laughs> I'm Jeff Foxworthy here on the Blue Collar Comedy Tour with Adam. Yep, that's right. Oh, you... So, Filling it up again. Shut up. RJ, where does it rank for you in your all-time films? Is it in your top ten? Like, f- films overall, not overall. just comedy. I, it's definitely in my top ten. It's it's for sure my favorite comedy, as I've already stated. But I'd say it's probably in my top ten. It's in my top five. It really is. I, I love the movie that much. I love the characters that much. I love the writing that much. 
Oh, no. oh, so you called me out for it, and then I have to give you a refill of the white <laughs> Russian. And, oh, and everyone else, too. That's nice. I'll just keep going. No, no. Yeah, so tonight on the yeah, Alcoholic Podcast. <laughs> is, that where, is that what we need to rename no, it to? Yeah, well, you guys are always drinking <laughs> some high flute and stuff. Uh, I brought white Russians because yeah. he's a good man. Because this is Big Lebowski. The white Russians are replacing the usual bourbon of some sort. <laughs> So, we haven't even dived into the movie right <laughs> yet, and we're already 22 minutes. So, the movie's about bowlers. Um, <laughs> they get in trouble with some nihilists. It's, Somebody it's, loses a toe. It's Donnie dies. It's a slightly dies. more serious version of Kingpin. <laughs> well, <laughs> negative. <laughs> it, it is written by Joel and Ethan Cohen. So, what is it about? A kidnapping. Yeah. Because all their movies... Are about kidnappings. What, was Caesar about a kidnapping? The good, the good ones are. I didn't watch that. Hail Caesar? I never saw that yeah. one. No. What about Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Was that a kidnap? No. I, actually, wait a minute. I watched that. There was no kidnapping. It was a prison no. break. But they're all very quirky, and you can definitely tell a But Raising Brothers Arizona movie. was. Fargo Love that was. Movie. Love that movie. Like, mm-hmm. there were, there, there's another one, too. I can't think of Oh, um, sure. the Brolin movie that I love so much. Oh, um, um, that book that was no really, country for old men. That's it. Yeah, the book was. Great. Oh yeah, that was kid. So, so you know, it's that wasn't about a goods. kidnapping. Uh-uh. That was about uh, money, drug money. Yeah, but no, they they definitely have a style. Mm-hmm. They do, and they have a very visual storytelling uh, mechanic. Like we were, we were just when we were rewatching, I was noticing jokes in the background. That are not really called out. They're not. Yeah, tell pulling, RJ about pulling that. Pulling a lot of attention to it. Ask if but he, they're ask hilarious. Him, ask him if he caught that. Now, I would I would assume you saw more seeing in the theater because when I went back and watched uh, saw Ghostbusters in the theater, if you just stare at Rick Moranis whenever he's on the fucking uh, scene, hilarious. He's always doing something, and I never noticed that on my TV at home. But when we were just rewatching, I kind of was paying attention to more things. And after Walter pulls the gun on the guy in the bowling alley when they go out, I always knew about the, like, the, the cops pulling up. Obviously, they had been called because mm-hmm. of Walter pulling the gun. But as they're walking out, he's carrying the dog carrier, and the dog is out of the carrier it's, following it's them. It's barking the whole time. Just fucking barking. <laughs> and to our knowledge, the dog... They left it in the parking lot because they never. <laughs> he picks up the crate and puts it on top. Dog. Yeah, he puts on the roof of oh, the yeah. car. No, the, the dog appears later. Oh, does it? Because when they go back to the Big Lebowski's. Is it when the thing Nihilists after, are there? When they, when they find Bunny. Yeah. Remember when he throws him out? <laughs> God. When he throws him out of the wheelchair, yeah. the dog's like licking his face and he That's pushes right. him mm. the whole time. <laughs> Which that's the, right yes the dog is but what's dog funny is back. like in that scene they don't make it apparent at all the dog could have just gone off but it's hilarious like he's carrying the dog carrier acting like the dog's in it but the dog's just at his heels yapping the whole time because <laughs> Walter's never paying attention to anybody he's always right. trying to make his point which so I love about him they have these visual jokes <laughs> going I wonder on why you love him yeah. so much <laughs> they have these visual jokes going on in the background where they know that they're there. They purposely put them there, but they're not saying like, "Hey, look at this fucking joke." If you notice it, you you chuckle. Yeah. And if you don't notice it, whatever, you're none the wiser. There's still the story going on, and right. I I really appreciate that layered storytelling. That's one of the reasons I love this movie so much is be, not just because of the movie as a whole. The performances are so spot on, and they're so subtle. Oh yeah. And, and the right and I love the script of this movie. Like the writing and the dialogue is, and, and all again, almost all the jokes are subtle. And Jeff Bridges just does such a good job in delivering that. So mm-hmm. like like the whole movie is an exercise and how subtle can we be and how funny can it still be? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I do appreciate that all of the wardrobe he wore was his actual own wardrobe. That he pulled from his personal closet. 
I yeah. did not know that. Yeah, that's yeah. hilarious. That, that is a nice fun fact. I think All even I think they even asked him if the sandals that are the pl- clear plastic mm-hmm. ones that are just ugly as shit those were his, and those are his too. <laughs> He's just walking around at him. Oh my god, it's amazing. Now, I nice. asked Mike about this, and I'd I'd like to hear your input. Uh, the character Donnie. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if Donnie as a theme or whatever has a bigger meaning because you watch them with Donnie. Donnie kind of seems like this even keeled guy, like this normal average Joe, while Walter's this extreme character, and the dude is the fucking dude mm-hmm. and Walter's just kind of there and then Walter or not Walter I'm sorry Donnie yeah, yeah. is just kind of there and he always bowls that strike and like you know that's the theme and then the, when he bowls and he gets the nine then he dies if there's some broader meaning to that arc or if that was just kind of almost like the uh, you know the book ends like starts you know Donnie's like the constant and as soon as he gets that non-strike the nine you know that the story's ending sure i don't i i just i'm just curious if there's some hidden meaning or significance to that kind of character being there because i mean obviously very purposeful now that you put it like that there probably is but i can't tell you what that is because this movie they wrote it to be in in the style of another writer, like they were tr- they were stylistically going for something, and some people called it like a noir type comedy or something. Yeah. So so maybe that writer had some kind of hook that was a device in his writing that that they were mimicking with that. But you know, I kind of saw Donnie as kind of like the R two D two and C three PO. Like he was always in the background, kind of watching things. But yes, the the movie is over when Donnie dies. I found I him to be the that. only one that was actually intelligent. Like he's the one always pointing out everything that's actually correct. I mean, and getting yelled at by Walter and, mm-hmm. and always told to shut up, but no one else would listen to yeah. him. But he was always, if you just listen to the man. <laughs> You what's, know? Wrong, what's wrong with Walter, dude? <laughs> yeah, he's always in the background <laughs> just saying something, and no one's you know paying attention to him. Mm-hmm. Which he was great in that too, as as minor off to the side in the background as oh, he was the yeah. whole time. He was just great. Some of the smaller characters were some of the best things in this movie. You yeah, know? Mm-hmm. it's very. Well, that's why I say it's the whole thing is an exercise in being subtle, especially Tara Reid. <laughs> now she's doing Sharknado because of that film. And two and four and that six chick and is, five. She's, and, she's got some problems. Yeah. yeah, she got whacked out yeah. after this point in her life, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she had some issues. That's probably had some of that Hollywood pressure beating down on her, but yeah, that's... Then Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah, I keep telling you, this is a dark comedy. Oh, yeah, think Philip about, Seymour Hoffman was like... I always forget that he's in it, and when I go back and watch it, I'm like, oh, fuck. I rem- you're so good. He's so good. Like, you're so good. He's so fidgety. I love watching him. If you just keep watching, he keeps readjusting himself mm-hmm. all the time, and, and all these little, slight little jerks and everything he's doing. I, he, he was great. His the best part with him was at the pool scene. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's marvelous. <laughs> That's marvelous. <laughs> well, I don't know what his name was. He's like, if he watches, you have to pay a hundred dollars. That's marvelous. Oh, that's good stuff. There's that one guy, I never, I shouldn't know his name, but he always plays like some ridiculous Russian. Although this time, I oh, guess God, he's, he's like a ridiculous. He's in every. German. Well, he's Satan in Constantine. Mm-hmm. He's I love. He's in John Wick two at the beginning. He's mm-hmm. I, he's in all. I love him. Love him. Love him. Who are you talking about? The, the the main nihilist guy. Yeah, the main nihilist. The, the, oh, porn, yeah. the beaver picture guy. I can never Carl remember. Hungus. Yeah. yeah I can never go. remember his actual name either, but I literally love him in everything. He's in yeah, there. He's, he's in fantastic. American Gods too. He plays one of the gods. Yeah, he was in fucking Armageddon as a crazy Russian and the cosmonaut up there that I saw like, that shithole movie. This is wants. how we fix things in Russia and he starts banging the thing with the fucking wrench. Like that dude is always perfect. For that quirky bullshit character. So does Aerosmith doing a damn love story of ballad? I'm fucking checked out. Well, it's weird to have your dad write a love ballad about you fucking yeah, Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> disturbing. You know who the other the short nihilist was, right? Oh yeah, Flea. 
I love that. Mm. And I, you know what I hated the fact was is he would he had lines, but every time that he would do a line, he was almost always off camera. They would just cut away from him when he would say something. You'd hear him, but you never actually. I wanted to see him actually try to act yeah. some of it out, you know, except for the true. parking lot. That's true. But they would always cut from him, and you would hear him, yeah. except for the parking lot. Like but the, there was just quick cuts then. The the bathtub yeah. scene. Like, we believe in nothing, Lebowski. Yeah. And then they cut, and you hear him be like, Yeah, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nice marmot. As he's walking away, like after that, when they're walking out of the bathroom, they're talking about cutting out of his Johnson. He's like, Yeah, we, we put, throw it on the ground and squish it. <laughs> yes, we stomp on it and squish it, Lebowski. Mm. I, how do you? So good. I love that movie so much. Now, I also brought this up to Mike when we were watching it. Uh, any woman I talk to says this is a total guy movie. And not many women that I know actually like this film. Really? Is I'm, that. I'm actually. About the, I was telling Adam I have the same experience. You know, that's true because. <laughs> I told my dad to watch this film and he watched it with his girlfriend. And. Well, my dad, of course, is cracking up, and she's like, "Are you serious? Do you think this is funny?" It's like, <laughs> yeah. so maybe it's right. I, even though there are some, probably one of the strongest, most feminist yeah. characters ever, and she's making great points the whole time too mm-hmm. about how men freak out about vagina and everything about it. I'm like, yeah, coitus. It's, exactly. You mean you mean coitus? <laughs> but then. Uh, I think they're kind of poking fun at her at the same time because she's got this pretentious, yeah, almost fakey English accent yeah. that, like, you know, she didn't pick up in California where right now yeah. right. she is in Los Angeles, and she's so. hanging out with some crazy video artist that's kind of like a Andy Warhol Who's weirdo in the, who's in the Harry Potter films. Yeah, yeah, I, and and I just, can't look at just him just now there without seeing him yeah. with his like. Little pencil mustache just yeah, giggling like a at a John magazine. Waters kind uh-huh. Of guy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Who which, the fuck is this guy? Which I think that's exactly right, RJ. You know, that did not hit me. That's They're totally doing a little shout out to that being Waters. That mm-hmm. that did not. I've kept looking at him and she was saying he's a. He's I don't an know art if they director. were. They were insulting him because yeah. she called him a video artist. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's exactly accurate. And I, I kept looking at him all the time. I'm like, yeah, I get that. But I, it didn't click until you just said that. Damn. That's good. <laughs> so why does this movie have legs? Like, what, what makes this still good today, I think 20 it's a, years the writing and after the, it was The writing released. and the cinematography and the acting is yeah, just I so good. I, I, that's my personal feeling. And I think the pacing is really great in it. It, I don't. I don't get bored. It is a long movie. It is considering long, considering that it's a comedy. Yeah. Really? How I, long do you think it was? Two hours and twenty minutes. Yeah, it's 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 over two hours. It said runtime was ninety eight minutes. That's it's weird. Not because I checked. It, it. That is not true. I checked it. True? I pulled it no. up on IMDb to see. That's when I was texting mm-hmm. uh, the, about the time. It was two hours and twenty minutes. Is the link? I wonder if they cut some stuff down, but it was two hours and twenty minutes. Hmm. I will I will verify this as yeah. we're talking, um, but to me like a good like a good timing for a comedy is is about ninety minutes, yeah. because nobody likes a run on joke, but uh, and really like action films need to be shorter fucking too. But uh, this was a longer movie, but like you said, they do such a great job with the characters, yeah, that I feel like that gives you enough like I, I want I want more time with these characters I want more time with the dude I want more time with Walter uh, it, it has a driving force that way and I it, especially when they're paired together like whenever the dude and Walter in a scene the dude is so even keeled like stoner and Walter is so fucking high strung like former military <laughs> yeah. like just conspiracy theorist type guy it's hilarious until the very end, which I like that they did that flip when he pours Dottie's uh, ashes all over him, and then he gets all apologetic, and he's the one that's like being submissive because he really pissed I'm, off. I'm sorry, dude. The dude. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> like really pissed yeah, the off. The hugging was very uncharacteristic. Yeah, you well, know, too. tonight was the first night that I realized that he runs a business called SoCheck Security. Oh yeah. 
he I don't know if you know this, but he when he picks them up before they go to, to for the drop, that's what it says on the sign above the door that he's standing at that he picks him up at in like oh. that outside mall. I remember the Sochek it, thing. It's but on it his van too. That's mm-hmm. what I must have seen it in. But okay, it, yeah, it's on the he picks him up in front of his office apparently. Hmm. So. Movie's just under two hours. It's one hour and fifty seven. I'm telling you, dude, minutes. I looked at the IMDB thing. No, I did too. Like when well Yeah. Oh, you know what? I was no, including that was on, credits. That's when I that's what I did. I added in well, fifteen some That was minutes. on IMDB, but I looked at something else and I saw like over two hours. Mm. So that must be including credits. Oh, and maybe they added that into it then when I saw the number. Or I was adding it in one or the other. All I know is this man's late all the time. All the time. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. Why he's bringing this up now? This sounds like an argument to be had after the podcast <laughs> ends. You know, I was going to come here and help you beat up on Adam, Adam for not seeing a lot of movies. I was going to back because I'm always screaming at the radio with you on that. Yeah, Adam, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But now you're throwing me under the bus for no, some bullshit that's not no. even true. No, so. you were completely so, yeah. on time today. Now you're living in my world when you're on the podcast. <laughs> You're the fucking punching bag for that piece of shit over there. By the way, have you counted how many times I've been called a piece of shit during the podcast and all the damn episodes? It's got to be getting close to like 50. It's got to be close to not enough. I don't know, yeah. but you've talked nothing but shit about me every time you've mentioned me on the podcast. I don't know you what you're talking about. <laughs> we do nothing but compliments for anybody that we, we know, love, oh respect. What does that say for your neighbor, Mark? So the movie Big Lebowski. Love you, Mark. <laughs> so it didn't do very well when it came out. No. In you know what was weird? I didn't realize this. They had just come off of doing Fargo. Fargo was their movie that came out before this, and that was nominated for an Academy Award, and it yeah. like did real well. And then I thought this was before Fargo. No, no this it was, was after. Wow. They, they were actually thinking about doing it before Fargo, but they did Fargo first. Okay. So, but uh, yeah, surprising. That is surprising. But I mean, this was who who uh, released this film? Was it New Line or Miramax? Um, was this considered an indie? I think it was. Yeah, I think. I it don't was. think so. You don't think so at the time? No, it had a it had a pretty big budget. I think. See, I told you. I'd oh, that's why he brought that. Was this was this the film that had like uh, the record for fucks for a while? Working Title Films was the production company. Yeah, work, yeah. And working? it was distributed by Polygram Entertainment in the UK and Gramercy Pictures in yeah, the US. Indie. They're more indie. Fifteen million dollar budget. That's that's fucking pennies. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, so but this it's was... simple. What they need a big budget for? They just had the big. They had two big locations, right? I guess, like, and Jeff Bridges was the biggest actor at the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At the time is important to say, because a lot of these people went on to have Fuck, a lot of these people did not get and, paid shit to for that. Yeah. I mean... But it boosted uh, their careers, so it was worth it. You know? John Goodman is a national treasure. I don't treasure. know that it boosted it their careers at the time. Are you kidding it, me? Basimi, it, I, Basimi got the, won, uh, got the Nick won, Cage movie. It won nothing. <laughs> It won no, the Cage movie. Yeah, and then he gets to be a pedophile next. What? Wait, what? what? <laughs> wasn't know what's in the Cage movie, Con Air. Totoro was in that? No. no he's Buscemi about was. Steve Buscemi. Oh, Buscemi. Why did you bring up Totoro? I didn't. I said he got to be the pedophile in the next film. But yeah. He did because I got the yeah, whole so because world. All because he was in this film. I see, he got his career boosted from this. I don't know if that's true. Oh yeah, it's true. But I think the no. the cult classic status that this movie got got attention to all everyone that was in it. As it, yeah, sure, yes, as it should. Maybe, maybe Philip Seymour Hoffman got his twister role because of this. <laughs> Extreme. God, he was he was he was entertaining in that. He only bothered me inside the uh, the mom's house. But then again, the mom bothered me, too. I'm like, just fucking kill this bitch with a tornado already. She irritates the shit out of me. When she's making all that pancakes and sausage and bacon and shit. I mean, my God. I mean, I need hey, it. Listen, let's not spoil the Twister episode. 
Where we relive that. <laughs> Twister was big shit when that movie came it out. It was. Well, that was that was at the uh, the beginning of the oh my god, CG is an amazing thing that adds to stories like movie telling. Cow. And then it got fucking stupid. Another cow. <laughs> Yeah, but like he's like, it. man, that that looks like a fucking real tornado, and everyone was like, holy shit! Yeah. And then it peaked at Avatar, and we're like, oh fuck, those look like real blue alien creatures. And now we're like, now we get can Sharknado. We, can we stop with the CG and Geostorm? And oh, the day after tomorrow, Claire, Claire's seen that film probably fifty. I'm not exaggerating, probably fifty times. The day after tomorrow. I don't like. She loves that movie. Which I don't one is like that? disaster movies? All like the, it's got the Dennis Quaid and um, oh yes I know what you're talking about now the, all the like the the Emmerich the yeah. Devlin and, and Emmerich the world freezes movies. over yeah yeah oh fuck that oh she yeah. loves that she fucking loves that movie it's, it's disaster porn Claire loves disaster Twister movies. is the only will you tell your wife like? that basically what Claire enjoys is watching fantastical holocausts <laughs> happening dude <laughs> that that's and, and this is me saying this. I, that was hey, that, that was a little. That close sounds to... rough, but that's what those fucking movies are. You're watching thousands, hundreds of thousands of people die on screen, and you're like, "Whoa, that's fucking crazy." You're not like, "Oh man, tragedy." But you you're, went. With, but you went with the word Holocaust, which it, I don't think the storm is purposely picking a specific religion to I wipe out. I don't think that Holocaust is specific to. But, but that's what wiping out a religious. Think. Sure. You're gonna, sure. He's going to cut this, too. You should see how much shit he cuts out of our podcast. No, I'm not cutting this because this is fucking legitimate. Oh, oh, a Holocaust oh I see. So is, when is, you're is, making a point, then it gets to stay. But what I am, I am not calling, because of Rhino, bitch, uh, yeah. I have to be cut 25 minutes out of a podcast. Because you called a heavyset woman a Rhino, bitch, for she was. fucking a half hour. She was a fucking Rhino. She was a bitch, and she looked like a fucking Rhino the way she was stomping her feet in the ground. Do you know her? Listen, Rose. Roseanne Barr lost her job with this kind of bullshit. Do you want Adam to fire you? Thank you. Thank you, RJ. No, me fire him. No, I think he's mistaken thinking I was supporting him. <laughs> it should have been supporting me. So, the Big Lebowski. Jeez. We, <laughs> what happened four years ago? You know what's important that happened four years ago? Um, Totoro hasn't had a movie since? The National Film Preservation Board voted that this should be preserved in the Library of Congress. So Trump gets to watch it whenever he wants? No, it's it, they think it's a culturally significant movie. It, I agree. So Trump wouldn't be interested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. That was yeah. loud. That was a little. <laughs> it's okay. We're in Mike's noisy ass fucking basement. You know what? The theme, the theme of this podcast is is your noisy basement and us getting sidetracked about the Holocaust. Apparently, <laughs> if you would have asked me what was going to come up tonight, Holocaust probably wasn't not on my short list. It was not. I had no notes prepared for that. Let's see. What would the dude think about the Holocaust? <laughs> Now that, this aggression listen, will not stand, yeah, man. I agree. He's an easygoing man. He loves everybody. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, this we're running really long on this podcast, but well, it's it's fine. That's uh, what she said. I also noticed, and I brought this up to Mike while we were rewatching, that the actual Lebowski or the the big Lebowski, as it should be, uh, kind of looks like FDR. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's crippled and has the blanket over his fucking lap, like he's got polio. Uh, yes, he's disabled, Adam. <laughs> Yeah, handicapped. Yeah, he's disabled. Uh, I I wondered about the significance of that, and we would point out like they they show actual footage of George, there's a lot of George Bush yeah, Senior. Nixon's in it. There's the image of Nixon. I wonder if the Big Lebowski was meant to look like a presidential character, like if he was supposed to be the establishment, since the dude is basically anti-establishment. I don't know if this helps or not, but before the movie, they were showing some Lebowski trivia stuff. Mm -hmm. And actually, the Coens wanted Marlon Brando to play the part of the big Lebowski. 
I would have liked to have seen him act that out. Wouldn't that have been Yeah, because he would have played him differently. Mm-hmm. I think I would have liked that actually better. Because I don't I didn't. I mean... What's the last Marlon Brando, like the most recent movie that Marlon Brando has been in that you remember? That uh, was that... Uh, Robert De Niro uh, Ed, and Edward, Edward Norton, Norton movie. Robert De Niro, what was it called? The um, Heist or something Something like that, like that where he... The, yeah, Edward that's Norton. That's the one I'm thinking about, though. Yeah. But that's the one where I get that... I have that impression of... <laughs> Uh, Edward, Edward Norton yeah. being the the simple the, the, janitor guy. Yeah, um, that was such a good, that that was a good movie. He, he, Edward Brandon, Norton was really good in it, but I, that's, I couldn't tell you three things about that movie. I don't remember. But anything. I don't. I, I could quote plenty of Edward Norton from that movie yeah. <laughs> just because I latched onto that character for some reason. It's like uh, it's like that in um, what's the Matt Damon and uh, Edward Norton movie? Um, Matt Damon. You know that they, they play poker. And oh yeah, John yeah, yeah, yeah! I love that movie. See, I don't. Rounders. Rounders. I only like two things out of that. You like John Malkovich. I like John Malkovich, and that's it. <laughs> so that's that's one thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I like Edward Norton, but this, he was not man, spectacular he's, in that he's movie. He's got alligator blood. Chick, chick, chick all night. I, yeah. I've, I'm fucking you with like, your own money. I only liked at the end where he's eating <laughs> his fucking Oreos. At the very end, I'm like, okay, now it's getting good, but. And Edward Norton, I don't even know why he was in the movie. It's a waste. Primal Fear, keep him in that. Where the fuck has Edward Norton been? I miss Edward Norton. After the uh, Incredible Hulk, he's been doing a lot of those independent films, playing like, um, what was the, um, uh, shit, Wes Anderson movies. He's been doing a couple of those. Oh, yeah, he was in that one. Uh, The the Budapest Hotel or something. Was Was he in in that that one? Yeah, he was in that one. He plays like an inspector guy. I know he was Um, in the... uh, the the one with the the kids camping, or whatever. I don't know. What Where that is. Bill Murray was like a dad. Kids camping. I I remember there was like a tent. Moonrise kids camping. Kingdom? Was that yeah, moon 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 something. I didn't see that, that movie. I didn't either because I don't fucking oh. like Wes Anderson. <laughs> oh, Wes you don't? Wes, you you like I, the Royal Tenenbaums? Fuck that movie. Whoa 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 whoa! How, you you don't you don't like the Life Aquatic? I never actually watched it because I don't like Wes Anderson. That was good. That, that is good really one. good. I hear that. So I Rushmore. I, I, I enjoyed. Do. I actually enjoyed Rushmore. I'm like I this with Rushmore. Rushmore. Then I watched two other Wes Anderson movies, and I said, "Fuck this dude." Watch Life Aquatic. I'm I think tired you, of your quirky bullshit. I, you would like <laughs> Life Aquatic very much. So I pro- not not just because Bill Murray, not just because him. You would not like it. I'm t- I, I'm thinking you will. If you didn't like the Royal Tenenbaums, you're not. I don't like, like it the Royal it's Tenenbaums. The same kind of weird pacing. It's weird Wes story. Anderson. I don't like Royal Tenenbaums, but I like Life Aquatic very much, very much. I, I will say Bill Murray's performance in that was exceptional. I liked it, but it was I went. There's love it. there's potential that I would like it for Bill Murray. Willem, Def- love, Willem Dafoe's in it, playing a great, love, playing a German, which is pretty love entertaining. Bill Murray. And John Turturro's in it. And Owen Wilson. Yeah, Owen and Wilson. Owen Turturro is in it, yeah. Uh, you know, but he's actually okay in this movie. <laughs> you wouldn't like it. If it isn't Wedding Crashers with Owen Wilson, I don't want to see it. Yeah, what's fucked up about the Royal Tenenbaums is they show, was it, it was Luke Wilson, yeah. right? Like shaving his head and like attempting suicide. Yeah. And then fucking Owen Wilson really did that shit like a few years later. And you're like, oh, well, even if you like that movie, you're like, oh. Kind of weird. So you're like, uh, oh, didn't have any original ideas? Is that, was that your first thought? No, yeah, you're right. Like Owen like, stole from his he's brother. He's like, he's jealous of his brother. Like, fuck that guy. You, neither one of them are spectacular actors. No. Has, has, I don't, I think they're, they're, they're fine. They're fine. Like, I'll How watch. How can you talk about Lightning McQueen like that? I've never watched one of those films. I never oh, will watch one of those films. What films? Cars. cars no fucking oh, way am no, i watching that dumb shit oh the cartoon nerd won't watch cars i don't like nascar and like anything you know, like the larry the cable i i can't stand larry the cable guy and I, he's like the fucking truck in that fucking bullshit i will not fucking watch it wait wait did you like did you like the fucking will ferrell rate nascar movie Tallahassee oh, or whatever the I'm fuck. I'm going to tell you something. Don't, I only recently don't. saw that movie and it is dumb. I don't I like won't. movies that are dumb. 
for the sake of being dumb. Yeah, no way. I like like, like Anchorman, all that kind of stuff. I just can't abide. Oh, like, the only Anchorman. one is oh. Airplane. Like Airplane I is genius, but all those other dumb comedies that are just tongue in cheek to be tongue in cheek the whole time. It's like there are two fantastic jokes in that uh, Ricky Bobby movie. I hate that fucking movie, but there are two phenomenal There's good jokes. jokes. Bad movie. When he's doing promotions for r- random fucking whatever, he said, if you don't chew Big Red, then fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't get I love funny. that. All right. And then I love like when he gets replaced by the John C. Riley character as being like the top whatever, like race car driver or whatever. Yeah, and he's like trying to figure out how to use the stereo and the TV at the same time. He's like, well, "Why do you want to use the stereo and the TV at the same time?" His answer was, well, "I like to party." The fact that you would think he's using not your selling t- it, I mean, no, I the, the fact that you would think that using your TV and the stereo at the same time constitutes partying yeah. cracks me up for some reason. I love that he's like, "Well, I like to party." It's like, wait. Are you trying to say that from me? I don't find no. that shit funny. He's he's saying that you he's making you a fucking team right now. I'm trying to say to you, yeah, I don't. But but then again, I don't find airplane funny. I don't find uh, any of the the fucking what's those the Holy Grail movies. They're not funny. I I don't like slapstick. That's me. I can't. I don't get I it. I know you don't like slapstick. I don't like Claire. The moment she sees the beginning of the fucking film and and Holy Grail when they're coming over the hill, and all you hear is. She's fucking in tears already. Just knowing that there's some dipshit behind that movie the guy. Is hilarious. The problem is that's English humor, and you are not sophisticated enough to understand it, Michael. My generation no. pillaged those fuckers. No, your generation didn't. Generation. Your your fucking ancestors did. Oh no, I've been there too. Your ancestors like fucking raped and pillaged. Well, and you notice I left raped out, and you went for it. Well, that's well, that, that's what they did. That but is I, your but ancestral. I said, but I said my generation, legacy. my generation pillaged it. I was there, so <laughs> not your generation. It's me. You're, you're no. looping me into that shit. And I didn't do any of that. <laughs> your ancestral legacy is rape and thievery. Did you have to go? Okay, hold on. No, not thievery. No, they that's what, killed everybody there first. Then that's they took what pillaging no, no, no. is. No, they weren't in graves and then took the shit off their bodies. They were dead because they killed happening? them, then took shit so off their bodies. If they're dead and you steal their shit, it's not stealing. No, they're it's dead. It's just acquiring. No, because they would kill the whole family. No one's going to miss that shit. You're justifying the actions of, of, of the Vikings. Of the Vikings. Yeah. I'm t- uh, yeah, I, you got to protect your own, man. What, so, hashtag tattoos. What if, what if they stole the shit? <laughs> Just before they raped. Okay, I don't like that you keep bringing up the rape part. <laughs> well, it, it's important. I know that's it's history. I know it's. I know, but what, what's your question <laughs> about pillaging? I'm just, I'm just trying to see how far you'll go to defend your ancestry. No. Um, yeah. I mean, they are the whitest race. Oh, you motherfucker! Ever. <laughs> you're, you're, Do you know how many times Jeff Bridges says the word man? In the Big Lebowski, there's so many times I'll go, man, man, I, I can't even imagine. Did you look it up? It was one of the trivia questions. Oh, I gotta know this. Yeah. What do you think? Well, give me, give me a number. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna say 162 times. 75. 140, like nine. Damn. They said I win. It, it averaged. <laughs> it averaged him saying, You're "Man, way low. like every." Like Price is right. One point five times every minute, or something like that. <laughs> That's hilarious. I love that movie. Yeah. All right. Times. Enough shitting on my uh, generation. Oh my god. It's not your generation. It's your fucking ancestry. Your generation is way different. And my generation. You your whitest can be in America. You're not on a fucking ship going over to fucking Ireland and like fucking somebody in the ass and then fucking killing their husband and then stealing their shit. You don't know what I do. Lovely, lovely. I hope you don't do that. <laughs> with her book of recipes. I don't know what the fuck is happening over there, but... And the finest one Hi. she's got. This is RJ's attempt to defuse the situation. The great American melting pot. All right, so let's, great let's, let's, let's cut this. Yeah. Adam, I, don't you, know how, I don't know how much of that stays. <laughs> Adam, you got anything going on? 
Well, wait, wait. Let's give our final like thoughts on the Big Lebowski okay. and its importance in society or some shit. Well, obviously, it, my opinion is it's in Congress's literature, filmatic, library vault of things. So it's really National high film up there. Library, That's library it. of Congress, culturally historical, aesthetically significant. For me, it's a top three film. For me, I love it. Top ten comedy for me. I can't. I I I've not given enough thought to top ten overall film. Well, to, you were only fourteen. One there. You were only fourteen. Ad, fourteen RJ? or fifteen? RJ? Number one comedy. One of the best written scripts ever. Amazing okay. Performance is amazing. So, uh, Common Ground. We all liked it. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I'm going to yell at you like I do Adam every time. But you shouldn't worry because. We'll never see you. And there's probably only like five of you that fucking listen. Um, five times each, we appreciate you. Three of us of those five are here. Yes. So why don't we give the stage to our guest to plug whatever he would like? RJ, you get five seconds. Five seconds. Well, I myself. I shouldn't say that. I have a podcast with a couple of other gentlemen and a revolving guest of a revolving cast of guests. It's called Stick This in Your Ear. It is a podcast about music. Wait, did you say stick this in your rear? No, I did not. Because <laughs> I will. Stick this in your ear. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Enunciation is important, kids. <laughs> Continue. Uh, we have a podcast about music. Uh, I've been a mobile DJ for 26 years. so I Yes, have DJ been, at my wedding, I, I have to add. I and did. he was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. I'm available. And, a, and at my Book wedding, me. too. RJ, the DJ, mobile music service based out of Bethel, Ohio. Check me out. Um, anyway, I have the podcast that I do with uh, John Har, who is a musician, and Rich Richmond, who is a writer. And uh, we talk about music from all different generations. We talk about a lot of album anniversaries. Mike has been on the podcast, and another one of your guests, Kyle, has been on. There's upcoming episodes that they'll be on, uh, talking about Muse, talking about a couple of Def Leppard albums. So check us out. You can find us on Twitter at, at In Ear Podcast. We're also, you can go to Stick. This in your ear dot com and that'll point you up. Whoa. And yeah. you just fuck the mic. Towards us and as well. And you can find us on Apple and all the other places you have podcasts. Uh one of my personal things that I'm doing is and I'm looking at you. I have become obsessed with this role playing game called Fate. And I've started amassing He's, 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 shut up. <laughs> I'm going to port the Ghostbusters role playing game from the 80s over to Fate. I didn't know there was a Ghostbusters role playing oh, game. Yeah. You were three. That's probably true. <laughs> Does that excite you at all? Kind of. Yeah. I'd be interested to hear more. I'm not so. interested at all. I didn't invite you. I, I was know. looking at Adam the whole time. I know. So. Uh, check out my podcast. That's what I'm doing. If you're looking for a DJ in the tri-state area or anywhere in the Midwest, you can hit me up on that too. Did you even say what your podcast is about? It's about music. Yeah, he did. did. I just I, it was a fucking question. Jesus, you don't he fucking listen to anyone. Listen to me what? All. <laughs> all right, and until next time. What? Do, do we have anything going on? <laughs> I did you, this to him last time too. <laughs> all the, the, we don't know when we're gonna fucking play this one yet. So they were say last time. Uh, well, we have, I could we, be in Scotland. If we have fucking attentive listeners, I could be in be like, Scotland right now. What is he talking about? Looking last at the birdies. Time? Looking at the fucking birdies. <laughs> hey, I also wanted to say one other thing. It's music related. There is a band that's local to Cincinnati called Wussy, and they actually have a song that is themed after the Big Lebowski. And it's a good song. It's not like a, you know when Don't trust when, when bands a lot of time write songs. He about loves the cure and stuff. What's it called? It is called nice. Donnie, Donnie's Death Song. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. I was saying, it would be better if it was called Nice Marmot. I would like that. <laughs> I'll it's suck your not. suck your dick for a thousand dollars. Is it called Donnie's? No, I'm, no, I'm <laughs> or suck myself. your dick for a thousand dollars. You got you got anything going on, Mike? Uh, I'm going on a trip soon. I'll be gone for a little over two weeks. This might be playing. We might be airing this while you're on. I vacation. might be on my trip right now, which okay. is going to be over for a little tour, two weeks. Um, other than that, I'm working on music. Music. None of your business. Yes. Yeah, he's working on a song called I'll Suck Your Dick for $1,000. <laughs> now I am. <laughs> Adam, what do you have going on? Um, that is a great fucking question. I'm working on leveling out my backyard for a shed. That's not that creative, but it's necessary. That is creative. I'm busy. I can't do leveling that. out is a precision thing. You can't it's, mess it's, it up. it's not enjoyable. If you need help, Argy doesn't live too far away from you. No, he does. I've been there. I do. All right. So until next time, thank you for letting our threesome get all up in you. Because we're bored and alive. That See, was good. That was like simplicity. That simplicity. You didn't overthink it. No. I just the let, polite thing would have been to let me. Do I said threesome. Oh, I'm not being a. Like, oh, he actually I'm hasn't known me. I'm for, the intro. You know, you've known me for half your life now, right? I'm the intro. He's the outro. You're just the meat between us. <laughs> <laughs> We're the buns. You're the meat. <laughs> I've been worse things. <laughs> <laughs>